best uh, press review show in Nigeria definitely is beyond the headlines on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodi, welcome to today's uh, uh, broadcast, and it promises to be very exciting. Uh, today, I have uh, two very special guests uh, uh, to my far right is uh, Mr. Godwin Mbachu from the Leadership Newspaper. Thank you for joining me, sir. All right, uh, the man who is making his debut on the program Beyond the Headlines is uh, Vitalis uh, Ude, uh, who is a public affairs analyst, and he'll be making his debut today. Vitalis, nice to have you join us in the studios. It's my pleasure. All right, uh, on today's edition, we'll be looking at uh, very, very salient issues that play, uh, making the rounds in Nigeria. We'll be looking at uh, one of the big issues uh, which says uh, why Nigeria relapsed uh, into recession by the SGF is one of the big talking points we'll be looking at today. And also we'll be looking at uh, uh, the federal government conceding that 1.02 trillion uh, naira was expended in import uh, duties. We'll also be looking at Ngozi uh, Kwesili. Uh, Obi Kwesili, sorry, uh, who is seeking an independent uh, probe of Buhari's uh, mental and physical health. Uh, that's one of the big talking issues. And also we'll be looking at uh, the ICPC who has traced uh, some large sums of money uh, in the accounts of some INEC officials. We'll also be looking at Zulum, uh, talking about the governor of Borneo State, uh, who has uh, said Nigeria should do well to get missionaries into the country to fight uh, Boko Haram. These and other big issues is what we'll be looking at on today's edition of the program, Beyond the Headlines, and you're sure you'll be getting very balanced analysis. All right, uh, let's kick start uh, uh, the big talking point. Uh, Mr. Mbachu, uh, just uh, 48 hours back, uh, the sad news about the killing of 43 uh, Nigerians uh, who were in their rice farmland uh, occurred, and a lot of uh, reactions have been uh, back and forth has occurred. Uh, for you, do you think you're pleased with the comments of the federal government, especially looking at Agaba Shehu's comment as regards the people not getting the clearance from the Nigerian army before going to farm? Thank you very much, uh, Mahmoud. I, it's a very, very sad uh, event. My heart bleeds. goes to the families of those that lost their life. I'm talking about the farmers, uh, in, you know, for a new state. Yeah. Having said that, I pray that such things will not happen again. And uh, coming to the presidency speech by one that I call my Oga, Garuba Shew, from the presidency. In fact, that statement and as you know elicited a lot of reaction. Even some people are saying that that statement ought not to be. But was he wrong? Wasn't he stating the obvious that they, uh, uh, knowing that the, the environment was a, like a war zone, it wasn't uh, good for them to have gone yeah, without... Yeah, what he meant, yeah, somewhere I argue that he maybe has been taken out of context or okay. misconstrued. All right. Because this is a, 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 a war zone. Yeah. They need to be guided Accordingly, you know, before yeah. you so that to avoid falling, you know, victim. Because the, even the state governor gets clearance from the military before yes, he goes to Baga. Yes, yeah. so, but uh, the, the Minister of Interior was even invited by the House of Rep talking about the, the, the ranger, the civil, the civil defense yeah. that need to guide them. So I think that uh, what ought to have been done the right is by giving them the clearance to get so that they will be, uh, you know, protected from any attack. But some Nigerians felt that that statement maybe was too to cover some others. But I think what Garuba Sheh was saying is that you don't trade on a bad uh, danger zone without being guided to avoid uh, you know, being hit by the Boko Haram. All right, uh, let's look at uh, the governor has come out to say uh, he believes that uh, Nigeria needs to engage foreigners to help us fight this Boko Haram insurgent. And uh, for you, as, as a Nigerian, looking at the comments of the federal government and also what the uh, Borneo State Governor is, uh, is suggesting, do you think it's something we could follow suit? But first of all, what's the reaction as regards uh, what the federal government said regarding the killing? Okay, first and foremost, my heart goes to the families of those who lost their lives. Okay. And those, I believe, whose only offense is belonging to our country where I see the government of the day have failed to provide security, which is the primary assignment or role of any government. So first and foremost, the suggestion came from the gentleman, the governor of uh, Borono State, Zulu, okay. who said Nigeria should go beyond 
you know, using the military okay. to hire mercenaries to ensure that this uh, incessant loss of life, life. is brought to uh, 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 but do you think it, it's also an enticement on the part of Nigerian security forces that they couldn't end uh, uh, Boko Haram, you know, continuous killing of Nigerians? Well, uh, let, let me, let me. I'm not, a, I'm not a security expert, but I've heard from the uh, the experts. First and foremost, recently uh, the chief of army staff turned 60, and retirement is by age. Or by service, okay. Both he has exceeded both. both. So, and in from my from my little knowledge about uh, security, you don't reinforce failure. In the past years, ten years or eleven years now, the military has been on this issue, sure. yeah. and uh, we have not had any improvement. It's not it's not about coming to the media to say you have defeated. You have decimated. Mm -hmm. We've had all different. Uh, they uh, killed uh, uh, Shakao many Shakao times, so many and he's still so alive. I, this issue, each time, you know, I'm, I must commend the governor because he's just trying to think out of the box. It is not working, so we have to look elsewhere to solve this uh, problem. Mm -hmm. But what do you think the federal government is hell bent of keep, keeping the service chiefs even when they are not delivering? And it, we've got uh, the the elders forum come out to call for the change of the service chiefs, Nigerians and different stakeholders have come out. Why do you think the president is hell-bent on sticking with these guards that are not delivering the goods? I, I want to tell you in honor that I think there is something they're not telling us. Just like he said, you know, you don't change the winning team. It's only when the winning team you return them. But like he said, a losing team already. And everybody is saying, please, change the guards rejig your structure to have fresh ideas. You know, everybody is just saying something, but it appears that the government of the day have, you know, you know, keep the deaf ears, which is not good in fighting the so I think that it's time for the president to listen to what Nigerians are saying and that will help us in covering this menace. Thank you. All right, uh, let, let's uh, go further. Uh, another is exciting news uh, broke uh, today that uh, the man who has been fleeing from uh, security agents in Nigeria, talking about the, uh, the former chairman of the reformed uh, pension tax force, uh, talking about Abdul Rashid Mena, was arrested in uh, Niger Republic. That's uh, the news uh, reaching us, and uh, it's been confirmed already. Uh, Victor, this, how, what does that tell us, the fact that Mena uh, was... In, on the run for some years, finally came into Nigeria, he was arrested, and somehow again he, he jumped bail, and uh, he's rearrested in Niger Republic. Do you think this, there's some bit of uh, connivance with certain group of persons for him to have that uh, opportunity to always uh, jump bail? Well, uh, the issue of minor has been with us, even from the administration of Jonathan. Of Jonathan, yeah. True. And if you look at the situation in other climes, these are issues where there are substantial ev uh, evidence, evidence yeah. to show that something went wrong. Okay. So I'm not the court, but from the public opinion. So, but this issue has lingered more than necessary. But the fact that he jumped to be, uh, do they need more this evidence? This is not the first time. Yeah. Recall, if you recall vividly, the other time he was arrested, he was either by Interpol in Dubai. Yeah. He ran to Dubai before he came back. So this is not the first time. And the way I'm looking at, in my own opinion, the government of the day, the security agencies are handling this thing with kid gloves, in my own opinion. O otherwise, by now, Mina should have been brought to book. All right, um, but you, uh, looking at Mina's uh, case, uh, him being rearrested in uh, Niger, what are your expectations uh, going forward? Yeah, going forward, uh, first of all, I want to give kudos to the, you know, uh, because this is intelligent. That shows you that. That tells you that if they, they want to get the job want done, to work. I always say the Nigerian police. If they want to get you, they have the thing they want to get you. That shows that they have the intelligence and they know the way about to go in. So there's nothing like issue of jumping bird. That is one. On the second note, the government has to come up to determine this matter. It has lingered and then do justice to it. That's my take on it. Let's look at the issue of MENA uh, uh, 
Alindume, who stood as a, a shorty for him, uh, the fact that uh, he was quickly uh, granted bail, uh, did you think that was the right step, or probably got an inkling of where Mena was? That was why they were quickly yes, given that. The senator, the former leader, he said that he, he cannot, uh, he didn't get to know where Mena, you know, where he went to before now. But I want to tell you that this is a legal process. Okay. He made the legal decision so that he has to get up the route. Perhaps that is why where Mena surface or where you know he went into hide. But it was a legal process. Once you meet the requirements given by the time and all the you know properties and all that, then you have to be granted bail. All right, uh, let's uh, move on to the uh, next uh, talking point. Uh, still talking about uh, the issue, uh, we just got this story as regards to uh, the comments of uh, the Minister of uh, Information and Culture, talking about Lai Mohammed, who has said that uh, the fact that Nigerian, Nigeria was denied the opportunity to buy weapons is the reason why the Boko Haram insurgency is still on. Do you think uh, the Minister of Information probably has run out of excuses? Uh, because uh, this is not in a new story telling us that uh, Nigeria was denied uh, the opportunity to buy arms, that's why the Boko Haram insurgency is still going on. Yeah, well, uh, I, I will agree with uh, the minister in some aspect. Okay. Yes, we're having problems to source this military hardware from... Uh, the one they've got in the world, have they done with it? No, but the issue is this. He failed to tell us why they refused to, you know, sell so, those military hardware to Nigeria. Okay. Because they look at our human rights record. Good. True. Are, are we using this uh, because in some instances, just like what happened in Lekki, are we using it to violate human rights? If you are doing that, you have to put your house in order, and they will allow you access to this weapon. So, we, lo looking at the minister, is just lamenting, but we should look at addressing the issue. What are those things? Let us improve. We have our National Human Rights Commission. So, yeah. yeah. Are we referring to them in issues like this? What role are they playing in what happened in, in, in Lekki massacre? Mm -hmm. So it's just one, you know, like my, 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 in the local parents, one problem to lead to the other. So if we are able to address, we are, we're talking about is for our own good. These people, these countries, they respect human rights. So they cannot give you this military hardware. Yes. And, and, yes, and use, and the issue, you know, there have been case, so many cases. Amnesty International has mm. said it of human rights violation yeah. in the fight against the soldiers yeah. in, in the Northeast. So it's not, it's not as if it's new to us. But you're looking at Lai Mohammed's uh, comment. Uh, do you think uh, they're creating more excuses than uh, solutions? Because uh, they also made mention of the fact that uh, 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 sacking of service chiefs is not the answer. That's what the presidency said today. Uh, if that's not the answer, why is it that they're not giving us the answer? Or is there something? So where is the solution? Where does the solution lie? I'm asking. So okay, the President, you answer us the, that question. The issue of uh, Lai Mohammed and saying that. Uh, Sorry, the Honorable Minister, sorry, you know, alleging that the foreign partners of countries refuse to, you know, uh, sell arms. That's not to me. That's not the, 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 the source of the, uh, you know, solving the problem. Because America someday, if you remember, volunteered, nobody didn't yes. mention that, yes, yes. to flush yes. somebody. And, and they refused they at that point. Yeah, they went to New Jersey so and, and arrested and, and, and got a release of American nationals about last month, am I right? Yeah, last month. So okay. America okay. sometime volunteered to help and, you know, flush out this, but the government uh, didn't buy into it. Do you think there's so, a reason why they didn't buy into it, but they could buy into uh, the Americans coming through Nigeria to go save their own national? Well, like I said, you know, that is something they need to explain to Nigerians because people are saying that if they are given that opportunity, by now, the issue of Boko Haram ought to have been, uh, you know, settled yes, yes, or yes. disseminated. But America, with their high intelligence and, uh, you know, uh, you know, hardware and all that, volunteer to help us because some of their nationals live here because their interest of human beings is there to them. So I don't think that uh, refusing to sell arms. When arms gets into your hands and maybe they not control it or they handle it well, the fear may be that you may use it for that. Uh, as said. All right, uh, the next uh, talking point we'll be looking at is uh, why Nigeria relapsed uh, into recession. That's uh, what uh, uh, the SGF told us today, that uh, he said that the fact that Nigerians were evading tax, tax evasion, is the reason why he says we went into recession. Do you 
agree? Do, do you make sense of what Boss Mustafa is trying to say when he says uh, tax evasion is the reason why Nigeria slipped into recession? The, uh, the, the Honorable Secretary to the Federal And we know that it's only the, the elites are the ones who actually evade the tax because they, they have a the large chunk of tax to pay. Yes, in my opinion, the, yeah. the SFG is just giving excuses. You can't say because people are evading tax. Naturally now, it is a global problem. Yeah. If you look at the world... The, the COVID, UK, right? Yes, yes, the pandemic issue. If you look at the UK, so, so many European countries, including South Africa, okay. Okay. They, have been, they, are, they are all in recession. So the issue is, is a global problem. I'm not looking... I'm, not, I'm looking from a global perspective. Yes, okay. So, but in our own case, before the global issue, we have economical economic issues. issues. You can check the, the, the value of Naira to dollar exchange. It's, it's alarming. So oh, we, with our, our own peculiar problems. So, All right. I, I think uh, we would, uh, let's, uh, um, but you, let's, let's take your pick as far what the HGF is saying as far tax evasion, the reason why Nigeria is going on recession. Uh, is that a very valid uh, reason, Mbachi? Yeah, thank you very much. The HGF is, um, is the chief scribe of this government. So one of their duties is to defend government policies, just like uh, the Minister of Information and uh, do his hand. Well, do you, do you defend it even when it's, it's things are obvious? Do you have to lie? Like, uh, or like paint the said, picture different? This government is becoming an excuse, what we call an excuse man, an excuse government. But we know that it's because of the pandemic, you know, it's a global thing. But I want to say that the government, those handling the economy, should think out of the box and know how to cushion some of these effects. Most Nigerians have been clamoring, calling for the reduction in the cost of governance. You know, cut the salaries of legislators and the rest, and then how to abate the plight of the common man. Government should look into it, and then to how to cushion the effect of the recession, not necessarily of tax uh, inversion. All right. So, uh, in essence, uh, we both agree that uh, it's not necessarily the tax evasion. It's not necessary. This is a global, you know, it's a global, it's a, it's, it's a global issue. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. And there, each country is uh, trying to solve it. You know how to ameliorate or the cushion the effects of the recession, not by way of giving excuses and telling us what led to this. Nigerians want to hear. Yeah, how to handle it and reduce the impact. All right, uh, let, uh, let's move on. Uh, we've got another interesting uh, story here that says the federal government uh, uh, concedes a 1.02 trillion Naira import duty waiver uh, and grant in three years was uh, what the federal government, the federal government says it, it considered uh, about a 1.024 trillion uh, import duty waivers, concessions and grants to drive economic growth in the country in the past three years. Uh, do you think this 1.024 trillion naira, uh, which the government said they have, uh, you know, yeah, given out in, in order to boost the economy, has been worth the while? Especially if you look at the challenges uh, Nigerians are fa facing. I don't think it's worth it because if the, the, the result is just like borrowing money, money, okay, and seeing the effects of why we borrow the, the money, money, why yeah. we put it. That is why some Nigerians, I don't want to mention the opposition, they are kicking against. Some of them because the effects they've not been to uh, you know see see benefit you know from such grants and all that. Okay. That is why you see some people trying to uh, criticize it because it's not started yielding. They've not seen the benefits on grant. All right, uh, this next story is uh, very interesting but controversial. Uh, when uh, we've got uh, Obiagili Kwesele, uh, who has called for the assessment of the physical and mental capab capability of Mr. President to carry out his duties in his office, how controversial do you think this is? And do you think it's something uh, that should be sincerely given a, sh a look at? If you, if you look at uh, Buhari's uh, presidency, from the inception, the, the media and his team, they have decided to, his health situation has been shredded in secrecy. Okay. So, you know, so they say the, you know, it only gives room for rumors. No, rumors, yeah. Because uh, just like what happened in, in the U.S., the U.S. president-elect Joe Biden was playing with his dog a couple of days ago, 
and he had a, a, a fracture. Oh, yes. So he made announcement, the president elect. So the issue of our public office holder, this should, should, it doesn't take anything. We are women. You can, anybody can be sick. sick. So when in a situation like this, in order not to, because the whole thing is shredded in secrecy, so anything that flies by in the media, well, people in Nigeria will take it. So I'm looking at it, well, we have maybe because we are a developing country, but in other crimes, the issue of the health of the president is a public issue, it should, should, be, should be made public. Uh, but you, uh, looking at uh, what uh, Begeli is uh, suggesting, do you think it's something the, the presidency will be bold enough uh, to carry out and probably also let Nigerians know the result if they indeed decide to heed to her uh, suggestion? Yeah, the, the former Minister of Education and the yeah. company of uh, Safe, uh, the, the they bring our girls, bring, bring our girls just back. back. He's a Nigerian and she has the right to know the, the status of her president, president yeah. no matter any party he belongs. So, calling for the status, it will help to clear any doubt. And this, in the era we are fighting, or the government is trying to fight the social media, so that they will not give, it will not give some simplest kind of rumors. So it will be for the, in the interest of the, 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 the government to, in fact, come out clear and Nip this things in the board by stating, stating obviously, just like he gave the Joe Biden uh, example. So he has, he, she has the right to know the the, 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 the the state of the mind of the president, in fact, the statue, the health statue. She, she made a, uh, a comment uh, towards the end to say that uh, she does not believe the physician, the uh, the, the 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 villa pres presidential uh, physician would be honest enough uh, to review whatever. Uh, information is gotten even if the test is carried out and so she's calling for an independent uh, panel to uh, you know uh, check the president's physical and mental state of mind do you think we'll ever get that done w w will we ever see an independent panel uh, do that with the presidency oblige Nigerians that's well, that right well uh, the issue is this you are talking about uh, the medical team in the presidency. Yes, yeah, because it, 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 but she, but she's saying that uh, the physician would not cannot be trusted that he would come out with the true, you know, uh, you know, result about whatever test is being carried out. Well, uh, if you recall, uh, the wife of the president that was some time ago. Yeah. The first uh, time. Yeah, said yeah. they budgeted some billions for state house clinic. Yes. So the issue is. Why are you talking about the medical team in, in Aso Rock when the president goes out, out of the shop to, for his medical treatment? So some, are, in my own opinion, some of the, those medical teams in the Aso Rock don't even know the health status of the president, not to talk of to give Nigeria. So, you know, if we want to know, we should be an independent team of medical physicians that will look into the health of the president. I think you now there's room for, if the health minister can say now, let us ascertain the health of the president, they can set up a help the committee that will look into the and report back to the president. Are you, are, are you, are you guys? It, 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 it's only the president <laughs> who we, who we allow, who we, who we grant such permission. So but do, you, do, do you see that happening, Mr. Mbachu? Yes, the president has the right to appoint his chief medical. Uh, yes. That's the way it has been. But I don't see them conceding to all of the SDPC's requests unless where they involve the NMA. But why wouldn't they? Why, uh, why wouldn't uh, they? An you why know, wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they do that? It, since it's not out of line, why wouldn't they do that? It's, it's not out of line because maybe certain interests or whatever need to be some information declared. Just like, like you asked, that the, those the chief minister may not be honest enough to come uh, comfortable to, give to release, you know, to make it to the public domain. Is it that? Is there? Do you think there's a, some extraordinary kind of disease that the presidency? president would have that would make them not willing to reveal it. It is only the chief physician himself that so. is entitled by the constitution that can make that determine that. Unless where the NMA as a body can come in to see how they can uh, resolve this uh, matter or address it so that it will be clear in the minds of Nigeria. Right, so people like uh, the president is in a good standing to lead the nation. 
All right, uh, before we go for a quick break, uh, let's look at this very important issue. ICPC traces uh, uh, 450 million naira to different accounts of uh, INEC officials from Port Harcourt uh, is the big story we are looking at this uh, afternoon. Uh, let's look at the fact that the I ICPC spokesperson Azuka Ogugua uh, disclosed that uh, 450 million naira was found in the accounts of different officials of INEC from River State. Uh, what does this point to, especially if you look at the fact that INEC has been accused repeatedly of uh, corruption and also inconclusive actions? Can we say this monies that have been found in the various accounts of these INEC officials uh, gives us an, a clue to what played out in the elections that went by? Well, uh, I believe they have not, they have just given us a tip of the iceberg because mm -hmm. they have not told us if it is left for the security agencies, they need to vet the account. Where did this money come from? How did they earn it? And since 2014. So because for you to receive bribe, somebody must be a giver and both are corporate. In this case, it's alleged. So the, the security agencies, they, they will need to tell us more so that we'll be able to know where and how they earn the money. If in that matter they are not able to defend the source of the money, money. then it will be a subject to... But, uh, well, but does that, uh, does that put some bit of uh, credibility, credibility issue as regards uh, the elections that took place in 2015? The fact that these monies were found uh, since 2014 and it has been accruing some uh, you know, benefit on top? Yes, there's a lot of uh, confidence crisis in INEC, according to the lawyers. He that uh, alleges must prove. Prove, yes. So the I want to say, proof. yesterday, if you check the papers, I authored the story okay. by a factional group of IPAC, Interparty, yeah. so they are calling for the probing okay, of, of INEC, oh. with all the projects they had and all that. Oh. So when you tie it with that, you know, some Nigerians before now have been crying about the complacency of some INEC staffs in conducting elections and all that. So it is up to the CPC, sorry, ICPC, ICPC yeah. to come up and follow up the matter to a logical conclusion not the matter to dive halfway because there are two parties to a crime as the lawyers will say the giver and the receiver so election cannot be rigged most times the the, uh, the, 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 the the chairman of INEC former chairman reappointed he will tell you that nothing happens without the politician and even nothing will happen without the politician and the staff so it is right time the agencies will come up hard on the INEC staff and use them as an example. example. Some people have been calling for a, a commission to try electoral offenders. So that's the only time we can get it right. Not by when you come and uh, you know manipulate elections and give to somebody who didn't win any election. Talking and that will affect governance. Talking about the IPAC you mentioned, yeah. uh, from your investigation, why do you think IPAC is actually moving uh, for that? Uh, knowing fully where they are also part of the, uh, the political parties because IPAC is made up of uh, members of some political parties and they're supposed to play a key role. But I think uh, the producer is giving me a signal. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, I'd like you to chew on that. All right, uh, you're watching Beyond the Headlines on Liberty Television, and I've got uh, two wonderful guests in the studio. To my far right is uh, Mr. Godwin Mbachi of the Leadership Newspaper right here in the Federal Capital Territory. And uh, also I've got uh, Vitalis uh, Ude, who is a public affairs analyst uh, making his debut on Beyond the Headlines. We'll go for a quick break. When we return, the program continues. Stay with us.
boys for all, vision for all. Ana cigar wata mota a kirar Honda discussion continue wanda aka sace a Birnin Kano motar tana da lambar karmar hukumar a jegulle ta jihar Lagos wato AGL 413 BB wato lambar motan shine AGL 413 BB motar dai mallakar Abubakar Abdullahi Isa ce kuma tana dauke da chassis number kamar haka 1HGCM 56716A144910 chassis number na wannan mota kenan idan Allah ya sa an gani sai a tuntubi wannan lambar 0.3 Biar bakwai tara uku shida shida zan maimaita sipili takwa sipili uku hudu biar bakwai tara uku shida shida kwa kuma atu ntipi chaji office ni ensa ndama pikusa ala ya saa adache amin from the break you're watching beyond the headlines on liberty television my name is anthony momodo and i'm glad to know you're still there we're looking at very silent issues making the rounds right here in africa's biggest black nation nigeria all right so before the break Mr. december you you're about uh speaking about ipac ipac uh, made up of uh, uh, members of some political parties to serve as a watchdog uh, for INEC and the political parties wouldn't you say ipac on its own has also faltered uh, that's why the political parties are like uh, uh, INEC chairman said no corruption, no buying or selling of vote or cause without party members playing a role. Yeah, uh, like I was saying, I, I was telling the uh, acting chairman that they ought to have started earlier enough to check met INEC. Okay. But they are coming around now to say that INEC want to pocket them because <laughs> they have they disagreed with INEC, INEC. and they are saying that is it, INEC is it disagreed with INEC concerning what sharing formula and money loot or what because some of the parties were deregistered and they okay. went to court okay. and got uh, at appeals court judgment INEC against INEC yes it's still sitting and they don't want to enforce it so these groups are saying that INEC has conducted uh, flawed elections in conclusion and the huge allocation they have taken from the uh, tax money money vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the claims election claims that they need to prove and know how such monies went down the drain whether they really actually spend the money they did to spend otherwise especially in the kind of election the outcome of the petitions in every court you go now you see election petitions all over the country so they are now saying that INEC books they want to look into INEC in in books okay Nashabu. but I said I would tell that because you disagree with it, because they brought another person to be the IPAC chairman. chairman, one of the parties, and this other person are trying to struggle to make sure that, okay, since you people don't want us here, we will spill the beans. That's what I told the okay. president. I said, you ought to have started scrutinizing yes, your function. We were given a constitutional function, function. IPAC. He's not a spokesman of a uh, spokes. spokes what do you call it? The Spokesperson of, 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 of the uh, INEC. INEC. So everything you start, so you just suddenly wake up to ask for INEC, you know, books, books. to look at it. These are as well as statutory functions. You ought to be because it's an uh, uh, agency for all the political parties. parties. All right, uh, uh, Vitus, let's look into uh, the other picture here. We are talking about, uh, on t in today's papers, uh, we, we saw a very, very scary headline that says, uh, Omahi after my life. Uh, says uh, Ayim. Ayim was the former uh, secretary to the government and also a former uh, Senate president. Uh, when Omahi, when Ayim calls out rights publicly to the Inspector General of Police, to the DSS, to say uh, Governor uh, David Omahi of Ebony State is after my life because he asked me to defect to the APC and I refused. How worrisome is that when someone like I am writes to these very established institutions and also to the presidency? Okay, let me start by the His Excellency, the Governor of the State. Is that your state? No, I'm not. Okay. okay, all right. So I never went to state. Sorry. Right. Right. So I've known him as a PDP chairman, state chairman of the Bonnie State. Eventually, he became the deputy governor. And the pious was instrumental 
So he's cleansing the ticket of PDP oh. in the first, in 2015. <laughs> All right. So, and I had, I read, I, well, I was going through the headlines this morning. I saw where he made an allegation that uh, in 2015, PDP forced him to raise five billion to fund cap presidential campaign. campaign. So, in my own opinion, he has the right to defect to any party. But he created, he started this media war. You saw the other senator from Adamawa, Abu. Uh, Abu. He defected, but he has not been on the media. You, it, the reason is best known to you. From our feeling, from what information we are getting from Ebony State is that initially he taught a lot of people, political uh, we'll, we'll stars of people will go with him. But now you can see the National Assembly member, they all deserted him. So he is now like a drowning man politically trying to lay hard on. The issue of... Uh, uh, well, being after... Uh, because I, I, I am said he came to his house to convince him on November 28th, I think. And when he refused, that's when uh, the threat began. And that's why he has decided to write to the president, the inspector general police. But how worrisome is it when the life of Ayim is well, involved? Well, it's worrisome, but the issue is this. I don't have the content of the petition. The okay. So you, it's, not, it's not enough to come and make, you know, uh, and make allegation without substantiating the allegation with evidence okay. of that he is after your life because he has not proven to us, the public, or no heard from the IG that this man is after his life. But you, the, uh, yeah. how, is it not grievous enough uh, uh, for someone of uh, IM status to write to the presidency, to the IG of police, to the DSS, saying a sitting governor is after my life? How serious do you think they're going to take it? Yeah. What does this mean for the two big political parties? Uh, I want to say that, first of all, uh, the, the, the governor of the, uh, of the Boeing state is grandstanding in this issue. He has a personal right to defect to any party without making it a media issue or questioning him. He has that right. That's okay. number one. But he raised an issue that those leaders, he had an understanding, he said agreement for them to move to APC together. With him. Only for them to, after he has become the, the stay back, that he has been backstabbed or betrayed. Okay. But I want to tell you that for him as a lawyer, he is a lawyer, a yeah. former senior president, former SLG, LGF. He must know what he's saying. So it's not a, it's not a key party for him. It's not a mean fit to achieve to this level. So he knows the legal implication. He that alleges most proof. So for him to write to IG and write to DSSS and then to the president, it means that it's a serious matter. And of course, the, uh, the governor now turned around to, he's trying to will I say uh, to attract uh, sympathy or because, because he thought they are, they, 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 we are covering police all this while. Yeah. They, 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 they are Papius saga, okay. or what they call the treatment, is what is getting a Papius treatment. When you think that you are a man of all, I know it all, I am the one that can dictate for everybody. These guys, these sorry sir, this man has been, is a, he should be a statesman now, to attend the level of secretary government, senior president, whether you like it or not, even if it is very, very tender, he's a statesman. So before, the, before him, he should be a junior politician in their state. So for him to say, you asked me to come and follow you to somewhere, I said no. There may be threat to so you know, tell the powers that be, I am working, I am moving a boy, he said, to your party. That's the word they normally use it to negotiate. And these people felt that, no, we cannot go blind. Do you? Mind you. Okay. It was Anyam that single-handed with Egu. Anyam was his backer because the governor never wanted him. LH is master. Okay. And uh, so on. But they wanted this rotation to continue. So Anyam being should be secretary of government then. Then, yeah. He's the leader of the party. And then he helped him to make the ticket. Uh, Anyam made a statement. He accused of, uh, of Omai of being delusional, like he was losing his mind. Uh, do you think uh, Omai has gotten to that level? Probably he's actually not getting things right because people let him down. Because uh, what he thought he was, or the key figure he thought he was, is proven not to be that way. Yeah, well, uh, um, I won't say... Could he be under some bit of pressure or... He should be under, for them politicians, this is part of the trade they apply. So, but the issue is this: uh, it looks like somebody who is disgruntled politically. Okay. Yeah. 
because he has given the new his new party, yeah. his new farm party, the impression that I'm coming, just like the... But why do you think they betrayed him, if, if well, that was the game plan? Well, you know, he started, in my opinion, yeah. he started on the wrong footing. How? He, he created a bad blood. Okay. You don't need to give us the reason why you're leaving your party. Okay. He, okay, he would have done it in a, in a way, first of all, before coming out to the media, lobby, politics is about lobby. Yeah. You lobby your followers. We are moving together. By the time you move with the full house, then you can now make no. your yeah, yeah about it. So I think he got it wrong. So is it, is, is it the end for uh, Omahi? What are your what do you expect to see in the coming days? Yeah, I think a story like that. End of road for Omahi. End of the roof. I wrote that parallel, but they were hunting me. Then when the Supreme Court, I was in Fresh Parts newspaper then, I think okay. 2007 there about. So it wasn't tactical. If I were him, there was no faction in the party of Peter Vinaboise, true or false, that can move him to sponsor a faction. He's passionate about what the constitution says. So if they go to court to challenge it, based on constitution, if our courts are working, I think that education will be uh, annoyed. So he didn't get, he didn't do his own work very well. He thought, I want to repeat myself, I don't of repeating myself. He thought that I am the only, he's not the only governor. We have uh, uh, a lady, we have Ebu, yes. and some other people. So you cannot be a man for all. He was trying to cook food for uh, the whole people of a boy. Then now they are cooking for him, he's running from Villa. <laughs> if you're a politician, they always get right. to come to Villa and promise them. So it's not like giving me so I say, you know, I say, don't worry, tomorrow you see it, I'll deliver that story. <laughs> you have not discovered that you have yeah, yeah, to, to the get clear the story, story. and all that. Why the story should fly? Worry, you and you can have a call from James that that story should not go. Look at what? Get it balanced and get reaction. And you go out, because you are desperate, you want byline or whatever, or you want to see that, you go out and say, don't worry, you're going to see it in Liberty TV by check by five. So that is the kind of thing he did. He was desperate. And he brought this issue of a PDP injustice. And Igbo presidency. If uh, Igbo should be given yeah. more CPU, you, they have thousand and one who are qualified. So to me, they have got the convention ambition between uh, Zeke and uh, uh, Kadibo. The okay. function ambition. You will have carried your leaders, try to convince them, and they said no, it's not right for us to go to put the what the basket in one basket. Okay. You can go that way, and because they have a rethink. The, the party gave them uh, LGF, the party gave his senior president, and he said it was injustice. You made your brother a zonal chairman, and another of your brother is deputy state chairman, and you are a governor of the state, and you are talking about injustice of a party uh, of to your zone. And some other minister is saying, you grab it, and now you are going to be fighting with the Bundayan in the same party. You think that the man who has been in opposition with Buhari is, and refused to any kind of bribe or anything, he remains in APP. That's why Buhari is very clear, sorry, PMB is very close to him, respect them. Okay. And you move there and begin to fight, say the governor is the leader of the party. He cannot have so he is in a tight corner, giving you this analysis. And then some people like the chat who is a national assembly service commission. These are old, old politicians. Sure. And some of them I can mention Lord is Moon, my mm -hmm. friend, I know for that commissioner. Okay. Those guys have seen it all. In age they have experience. They are educated. So you cannot say they are traders or they don't know anything. All right, yeah, you were itching yeah, to yeah, come yeah, in. Yeah, I just want to come in because, <laughs> yes. you know, he gave us the, Omar, he gave the governor of mine, yeah. gave the excuse that uh, the Igbo people has been in, under the... Uh, the PDP, PDP, and that's why they've that got they the president. They supportive of the PDP, but now the PDP has not done anything for them since 1998. But the issue is this, Omar has been in the public office by proxy as a state chairman of the party, as a deputy governor, and I've known, I've known, I've not known him as an Igbo man who advocates for Igbo people. So I'm surprised suddenly. And, I, and my own thought is that maybe people are looking at it from that point of view. That all of a sudden you became an advocate of Igbo presidency, but you have never fought the cause of Igbo since I've known him as a public officer. So, okay, so that's bad enough for Omahi. Hope uh, he's not going to be sinking very soon. All right, uh, let's go to the, uh, uh, hopefully, the last uh, uh, talking point here. Uh, it, it says that uh, the transport sector uh, workers to get a 4.9 billion COVID-19 support fund from the federal government. My big question to Mbachu is, do you think uh, the rural transport sector workers are the, the most in need of COVID-19 support? 
if you look at the whole other sectors of our national life, can you truly say the transport sector workers deserve more COVID-19 uh, support than other sectors? Yeah, I want to say that without that missing words, that there are also some other, you know, segment of the society that uh, I don't want to use the word, uh, they call them the poorest or the, or the least privileged, but the transport sector. Yeah. You have those that are, drive, are driving taxis. Okay. And also... When our roads are already, our roads are bad, uh, other things concerning road maintenance and all the, no matter the money you give them, wouldn't their vehicles or whatever still get... You That's know, all I'm trying to say. That yeah. first of all, government need to the infrastructure development is one. One, okay. But I'm trying to okay. say you are, you ask whether they are they the only well, one. Yeah, to consider. yeah. The, yes. I'm saying that even yeah. among the media, they still have the lower category Cara, okay. driving taxi that may rely on daily, yeah. you know, making money for them to live, feed their family. But I'm trying to say that the one like it's just like the NLC and the and uh, and the government what they promise them. Up to and they are fighting that it should be gazetted in the national assembly. Okay. So, but if they want to assist the road transport workers, let them be sincere about it. And those who needed it, those who need the the, the assistance, the COVID-19, should get, get it. it. Not ending in the pockets of those that the agents. What I mean, the agents, the government agents that will go and say, you go and give to this people. Half of the people may not get even one thought, and they end up creating more problems. Just like. Uh, some of the program they do not empower and all that trader money and all this. Those who are meant the beneficiaries of this uh, program, at the end of the day, don't normally used to get that. So even as government is concerned, they should consider other sectors, other sectors, so that it will not be. Uh, all right. Uh, for for the want of time, uh, Vitalis, I'll, I'll just like you to chew on this. Everybody has uh, cleared governors of any blame of insecurity in their state saying they do not have control over the, the Nigerian police or the army and uh, uh, saying it's the presidency the blame should go to. Uh, do you agree with uh, Governor Erfai? Because he says every, even when they give orders to the Nigerian police, they have to uh, get approval from the IGP before they get the job done. And Sorry, so, did you use the word that the blame should go to the presidency? No, no. But when you say uh, they are not the ones, they don't have control over uh, the security agents, the police, the army, uh, that even when they give them uh, uh, command, they have to get clearance from the IGP. And technically, you know, when the IGP is called upon, he has to go straight to the presidency. Uh, so is he technically telling us that uh, anything that goes wrong in their state, we shouldn't hold them responsible? Thank you. The issue of, uh, you know, security, I, especially. I, I, I agree totally yeah. with uh, Governor Erofai because in this case, they are helpless, just like the Governor of Bruno State. You know, this this again has reinforced the call for state well, police, policy, okay, community policy. Listen, okay. What am I talking about? I had Erofai in that interview. He said, apart from the salary of the Nigerian police force, yeah, the governors. Logistics from their security vote, fueling the car, providing equipment for the police. So why would, would they have state police? Since the federal government is only paying for the salaries of the police and the state are bearing the brunt of you know equipping the police. Uh, pressure yeah. okay. So in this issue and he said to the extent of even in my local government we should have what we call community policing. Invariably, if you look at what the governor of Borono is saying about yeah, so you know, yeah. Yeah, trying to engage yeah. their locals, it's just a kind of community policy. policy. So the issue of politi uh, community policy and state police cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm, but you, don't you think uh, they're just throwing away from their responsibility? We know that they have huge amounts of money given to them on monthly basis as security votes. And we know that not all the states are as active or have... Uh, security challenges yeah, like all that. So, w is uh, Erufai not playing to the gallery? Yeah, I want to say that Erufai is a very intelligent person. Yeah, very, very intelligent. Very intelligent. I want yeah. somebody that I admire, irrespective of religion and whatever. Because, yeah, he um, is very intelligent. Of, one, he's trying to use it to push for community policy, which he believes. Okay. That's number one. Then I want to tell you that in my state, Ukorocha, he came in, he would wink us. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> was shouting, Ukorocha, Ukorocha, until the other thing happened. Four billion. Four billion, he drop it, and it's from his uh, security foot. Four billion, uh, and, uh, and he what, what did he do with the four billion? I don't understand. That is he dropped the salary it. of his security 
What do you call Personnel. it? No, no. Aid. They what they used to give governors. Uh, security vote. Yes. Security vote. vote. They didn't touch it. You just dash it to the state. Yes. So most governors that have that kind of money, money. you can use it to if you take even one billion and if you security police and make sure. That was what the corrupt child did that he got the heart of a very more person. And he said we've never seen this kind of thing before. Within that is four years period before okay. you know their style. <laughs> it doesn't touch it. Okay. So but then what the RFI is saying is that it is a prelude for us to implement the community policy so that it's not a federation system where you call the IG, you go and take the sorry, the, the, the president call he moves, he leaves us now and, and, and run. Then if you are a, 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 a commissioner, the, the IG calls you. You leave everything you are doing. Even the governor is here with you. My IG is calling me. He leaves. That's the structure. So until that is being restructured, it's a part of the claim for restructuring. But is, is that not the highest level of unprofessionalism when you're with uh, the governor and you say a call from the IG? When because the, 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 the governor the, the, the should president be has the power to, you know, uh, no, when I said appoint, not to nominate, to appoint the IG and ratify by the Police Service Commission and the Council of States. That's made up of the former head of states. That's the way it is also. The IG, you know, the, the CPs are yeah. terrible to the IG. IG yeah. So the governors are handicapped in this aspect. If you give order, I don't want to see anybody at liberty by four. But then, uh, IG said otherwise. You, 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 you should be clashing interests. And you want, you will pay you and transfer you. Oh, yeah. So it is right. community policy, but people are afraid that the governors also we use will it. use it. As those uh, some of us are from political family, they will call you now and tell you, come, deliver that behind you. That's all you can do. All right, uh, right. that's uh, how we're going to call it a wrap on today's edition of the program, Beyond the Headlines. I want to say a big thank you to uh, Mr. Godwin Mbachu from Leadership Newspaper right here in the Federal Capital Territory uh, for his very resounding uh, analysis. And not forgetting the man who is making his debut today, but he doesn't look like he's making his debut. He has been spot on. I want to say a big thank you to uh, Vitalis uh, Ude uh, for uh, giving us his uh, uh, very open analysis as regards the big stories uh, we looked at today's edition. Special thanks to the entire production team uh, for making sure we came out uh, clear and uh, the free uh, to you at home there. Hope uh, we were able to, you know, give you very sound analysis as regards the big stories uh, we shared today. My name is Anthony Momodi saying thank you very much. Tomorrow is going to be another edition, but it will be coming from our Kaduna studios and Abdulaziz will be there to do justice to it. So don't miss it. Four to five is the time check. All right, uh, that's how we call it a wrap on today's edition. Nigeria, good evening. Thank you.